What we have left to do is we've got to edit the vocals, uh, which means we've got to comp them together. And then what I will be doing is melodyning the vocals. I'll show you that process as well. And then we've got to jump over into mixing and mastering. We'll likely be automating some effects. And then we're going to be throwing on the new summing features of Luna, which is going to be really cool. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Steve Kinney. I'm an engineer and a producer. I'm really excited about this video and I apologize that it's taken so long for me to get here. Uh, I've been in the midst of a 10 song album, which is just wrapped up and I'm now in the mastering phase. So I might put out a video on that. I might not. Uh, I'm sure that you guys would love to see what I do for mastering. So maybe I will. Um, of course, we are going to cover mastering in part three of this series, uh, but this video is going to all be about uh, vocals, writing the song, and what we, you know, how we tackled that. Now, keep in mind that all of the sounds that we've used were part of the Console Classic Sessions Pack, which is available now. You can get it at my website, so check it out. It's the quickest way to production-ready sounds, awesome starting points, and I think you guys will really love it, so check those out. All right, so the state of the song was that we had uh, all the guitars, all the instrumentation and arrangements done, but we didn't really even have a song yet, so we needed to bring in some writers. Now, I brought in uh, the love of my life, Katrina Burgoyne. She's an amazing songwriter, incredibly talented Australian artist, and we also brought in our other Australian friend, incredibly talented, uh, Troy Kemp and his music is just always fun, super up-tempo, which is exactly what the song needed. I think it took us roughly about two days uh, just to completely finish the song. And then from there, we moved on to vocal tracking. Now, during the tracking process, I wanted a good all-around mic and I looked no further than the Aston Spirit. I creatively choose that mic all the time. I love it, I think it's super cool, it's nifty, it's new, it's got its own sound, and that's everything that I look for in creating sounds. I want it to be unique. So we went with the Aston Spirit, and being that we're in Luna, I decided to go with something like a Neve Pre while we were recording. Uh, so I believe I did the Neve 1084, and uh, I think it got a pretty dang good result. So of course, while we were tracking, I didn't totally print the effects that were on the voice but uh, that's the bulk of the signal processing chain, which was Neve Pre, a Aston Spirit microphone. And now, because we're using the Apollo Solo, and that's all we're doing with, the, with this particular song, that's, that's kind of the thing that we're doing here, I had to get a little creative just because of my studio setup that I have this doesn't have a connection to the monitor. So rather than getting in behind this desk and just tearing it all apart, I just figured I would take two of the outputs and run them into the Apollo X8 uh, just on its own and just use the monitors there. A lot of people don't realize the device will still work if it's not plugged into your computer. So it'll still send and receive signals and still work. So I just use that kind of like as a monitor device uh, just to listen back to when everybody else was in the room. But ideally, if I was just, you know, in my own studio environment, uh, you know, aside from this, I'd probably already have those hooked up. This doesn't have a talkback, so in some of the footage that you'll see while we were tracking, we're in this smaller apartment and we kind of had to do as much as we could to, you know, keep the vocals clean. So they're around the corner in a closed off, like deadened, quiet closet space and we use the Aston Halo as well to kind of stop some early reflections and deal with the treatment of that space. Um, but I really love having the talkback functionality of the Twin and the X8. So that's kind of my experience so far with the Solo. I don't think that if you're using the Solo, you're probably going to be using it for yourself or you might be tracking somebody else, but you're going to be in a similar environment more than likely. You're not going to be in a space where uh, you're going to need that talk back. But if you do and you're doing vocals, you can always use the second mic input and just use that as your talk back mic, which is kind of a pro tip there. And I haven't committed to using the API or the Neve summing, but I'm definitely going to be trying out both. So that's going to be really cool. And then finally, I'll just show you what I did for mastering and my thought process behind it. And uh, 
From there, I'm going to be delivering the song to Troy and Kat, they'll be listening to it. And uh, from there, I, I'm pretty sure, hopefully, they're going to be releasing it, so you guys will be able to find it out on Spotify and Apple Music, which would be pretty cool. All right, so I've got Troy Camp and the love of my life, Katrina Burgoyne, two amazing Australian artists, and we're going to try to see if we can write this song and get this song going, and uh, it's going to be really great. What is up, guys? Hey, man! How's it going? Hello! Dude, so, let's do this. Whenever I was making the console classics pack, and I was building these, like, preset files, I just started grooving along to this track, uh, to this like th structure in my head, and then that's where the track came from. As far as any melody structure, I'm not tied to anything. I think it is it I think it could be a really good like summer fun song. If you want to go ahead and give it a go, uh, just sing some of those parts again for me. Let's get to rocking them flip flops, cool shades on, day drinking. Jumping off the old pier, diving right in like a holiday fling, heart sinking. Feet on the dash, feel the heat from the black top, yeah, for the coast, for one last shot, a little taste. Alright, so the session just ended, the singers did a great job. Um, what I have to do now is I have to comp and choose the best performances, and then what I like to do is cut out all the dead, unwanted noise. Um, Literally word by word, it's kind of a painstaking process. A lot of people don't do it. I love to do it. Um, then the final thing is melodining, tuning, and just kind of tightening each word. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do next. Uh, I'll show you guys how I do my comping process in Luna. It's not perfect by any means, and it's kind of a nightmare. But that's what I'm going to do next, and I'm not going to just go through the whole thing because it's going to take way too long in the video. So. Just wanted to wrap up today's tracking session before we move on to the editing. All right, so this brings us on to vocal editing and how do I do that in Luna right now? And honestly, I've been thinking about this and kind of dreading it because I, they, they don't have it just in there just yet. Now I have watched some of the Luna office hours and there's a ton of new features that are gonna be absolutely incredible. It's gonna take this to the next level and that's coming up shortly. But for now, I'm actually still on an older version of Luna. Uh, I think I'm on 1.1.2 1. 1. Uh, and I think they have 1.1.3 1. 1. or four, something like that is out right now. I don't know. I've been too busy to pay attention to that. So if you look on my screen here, I've got the vocal guide and vocal copy. So before we move forward, what I do want to do is come up here and I want to just hide these tracks. They're already muted, but I don't need the guides anymore. So now we're just dealing with the final vocal tracks. So we've got Kat's vocal, we've got Troy's vocal, we've got some harmonies. Uh, we've got some like ad-lib stuff, and then we've got some groups, some group vocals there. But we've got to comp them together, and I, I don't know how I'm, <laughs> I'm still trying to develop a way to do that. I know that Luna doesn't overwrite any of the audio, it only displays what's on top of it. So I think what I'm going to have to do is just create a track at the bottom. So I think I'm, I think that's how I'm going to approach it. So yeah, let's see what we get here. This is it's my first time trying to do something like this here. So what we're going to say is this going to be Troy vocal comp. And let's move this Okay, so it's already right next to it. Let's change color. You know me, I like my colors changed. Um, all right. Oh, and also let's do one more thing too. I just, just, uh, I want to go through and turn off all of the input monitoring because we don't need that right now. So let's just keep this as clean of a setup as possible. And we'll jump back into this view. 
And I think before we go any further, let's just listen to the state of the song. And I know that it's a pretty rough mix so far, but I do want to play the song all the way through so you guys kind of see before and after what we do. Uh, so here we go. Summer like key lime pie and lemonade Cruising top down, hand in the wind Doing that thing when you're making waves Feet on the dash, feel the heat from the black top Head for the close for one last shot A little taste, a little getaway Before the season change yeah, The winter turns to spring On the couch and wishing somehow you could go back to it all. Look at the good times, sunshine, daylight start to fade. Moonlight, just like beach bum renegades. Just been a senior on the dance floor. Let's make it our mission to lose our inhibition and do it all before summer starts to fall. And then flip flops, cool shades on, day drinking. Jumping up the old beer, diving right in like a holiday fling, heart sinking. Oh, it's been a long year. Let's kick it in here and build us a beach, beach bonfire. bonfire. Stars shining bright, and those fireflies like diamonds dripping in the sky. Cool. So that's kind of the state of the song. There's a lot of uh, a lot of editing that I'm gonna have to do on the vocals. Yes, there's a little bit of timing things that I'll have to do just to really tighten it up. But um, it's a good starting point, and uh, they did a great job singing. We're gonna pick the best takes from that, build the best vocal takes. Uh, then we're gonna have to start mixing. Um, there's a lot of little fades that I'll have to do with some of those vocals to make them sit right and we'll probably have to apply uh, probably some DSing in on some of these tracks and uh, maybe change up some of the compression on there. Um, it makes it starting to get a little muddy in certain spots so we'll definitely have to play around with that and be really mindful of it. But um, yeah, let's, uh, let's zero this bad boy out. So I think what I'm going to do is solo this track out as I listen to it. And I'm just going to start to pull each one of these takes back and listen to an older version 
and then whichever one I like more, I'm gonna drag it down to the next track. I think that I think that that'll work. Um, and then after that, we're gonna go into Melodyne, and we're gonna go through that process. So let's start this process. Without further ado, let's just we're just gonna go line by line. This is gonna be really boring. So I'll show you how I do the first couple, uh, and then we'll probably just do a fast forward. Uh, time lapse kind of thing and then uh, I'll show you the next process which is going to be melodyning. Nothing says summer like key lime pie and lemonade. Pretty clean line. Uh, tonally is good. Let's listen to this next one. Nothing says summer like key lime pie and lemonade. So I think I liked I think I really like the beginning part of this line, but I think I like the original second part. So let's listen to this. Nothing says summer like key lime pie and lemonade. Yeah, I don't know if that's gonna work. So let's change our grid to a faster grid. Let's zoom in further so we get a better crossfade there. Nothing says summer like key lime pie and lemonade. Sounds pretty clean. I like that. So let's listen to this in context. Yeah, so there's just a little bit of LA2A. Just some light compression here. Actually, it might be heavy. Let's listen. Nothing says summer like key lime pie and lemonade. Yeah, it's pretty heavy. Sounds cool. All right. So in the context here. Nothing says summer like key lime pie and lemonade. Yeah, that's cool. And there's not really a good way to go through them all, at least from everything that I've read. So if, if I'm doing it wrong, let me know in the comments because I don't want to keep doing it this way. All right. Eat on the dash, feel the heat from the blacktop, headed for the coast for one last shot. Yeah, cool. So Melodyne, I'll, I'll take care of all the little details on that. All right, let's listen to the next bit. Yeah, the, the winter, winter turns, turns to spring. spring. But before summer. Yeah, that's cool. And that's nothing that a little DSer can't fix. So um, we'll keep we'll keep plugging along with that. That feels pretty good. Let's listen to one more though. So so far. Uh, just kind of dragging the waveform back and forth. I'm not actually having that much difficulty doing it. The only trouble is I can't really know how many tracks or layers underneath it that I really have. So um, there might be a really good take buried in there somewhere that I don't, you know, I haven't really gotten to because I've already liked one that I've heard. Now that's cool because I'm using my ears and just making a determination, but I don't know that it's helping me be the most thorough because I don't know I don't know how many more I have to go through. I'm just kind of stopping when I like one, which I mean I guess it, there's worse things in the world than liking a take, but you know, still there might be some gold buried in there somewhere that I'd I'd love to know if there's any other takes. So I'm sure this is a feature that they're really they're already working on or if they they might have already fixed, but um, we're just going to keep plugging along and uh, we'll go through all of this and then we'll move on to the next bit. So, All right, so I just wrapped up uh, comping together the first vocal. Um, kind of stumbled around with it at first. My initial concept of grabbing the good take and bringing it down to another layer, uh, another track. I didn't really need to do that. Um, I was able to just kind of manage my way through sliding the uh, sliding each take kind of around at the beginning and revealing the other take but I did figure out a quicker way to do it and it's pretty cool so I'll, I'll show you right here uh, on cat's take so if we just listen to that and I'm going to zoom in on the verse here what I can do is put my playhead right before and press the s button and you'll watch it says here cat lv aston spirit uh, underscore five press S and now all of a sudden number four shows up 
I do it again, three. And then I can just command Z my way back to the original, the original take. Um, I noticed that about halfway through, so uh, it kind of sped up a little bit. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna get back to it and wrap up with that, and then we'll be on to uh, Melodyne and showing you how I do that. All right, so I've got my lead vocals uh, for both singers comped. I've got my harmony and the little group vocals in the bridge section. They're all ready to go, and I've got the little fades on them as well. If you zoom in, you can see little fades at the beginning. Uh, that really helps keep the vocals sounding clean. Um, so this is ready to go to the next step, which is melodyning. So in order to do that, let's go to our mixer view, and we've got our three main vocals here, the harmony vocal, uh, the lead vocal for Troy, and the lead vocal for Cat. Um, they're all ready to go. So these are the ones that we're going to go ahead and do the melodyning on. To pull that up, you go to your inserts, and I always make Melodyne my first insert. That way, all of the processing that's after it, um, it's really just hitting just the vocal, um, and it's the clean, tuned vocal. If I were to put Melodyne after those plugins, I would be Melodyning phase shifted EQ and you know stuff like that. So I uh, oh, put it as a first insert. Highly recommend doing that. And you just go over here and choose Melodyne. And once that comes up um, from here, what you do is you just go to your spot that you're going to start tracking from because you retrack it into Melodyne. And then Melodyne becomes your output point. So it's actually playing the audio from Melodyne. So um, all you do is you hit this little transfer button and then uh, hit the play button. Feet on the dash, feel the heat from the black. Now you can see Melodyne is receiving the audio. And I like to just hit the play button, walk away, and you know, grab a cup of coffee, and then that's that. Some people like to go instance by instance. I just find I get it all out of the way and then I just go through line by line and tune it. Now what I'd do is I'd move on over to this part and hit the transfer button again. Just let it play through uh, up until that little turnaround. Oh, it's been a long year. Let's kick it in a gear and build us up. So while that's going, I would like to mention Starshine. that Melodyne is superior in a lot of ways to auto-tune um, unless you have like just a killer singer and you just need fast turnaround times i usually i usually avoid auto-tune unless you want that tone that it provides and i mean now you know uh, now, now you're kind of getting really picky on your on your choice but again it becomes a choice i choose melodyne i like the results i get from it I can manually correct notes. Sometimes you get weird, weird vowel sounds when you use autotune. That's the only reason that I choose Melodyne. Let's transfer one more time. Let's soak up the good times, sunshine before ten lines start to fade, skin and dip it in a moon. So, so, so far, while I've been using Luna to do this tracking, to do. Uh, to do this comping, I've learned a lot. Um, and I, I actually really like the workflow. Um, and I just can't wait for this thing to really get to that next level where they fix some of these major, these major hurdles. Um, Cause it's, it's just a fantastic sounding, fantastic sounding uh, workstation. I don't, you know, I, I know they call it recording system, but I'll call it a DAW. <laughs> I think this is an amazing doll, and I cannot wait. I'm I'm all in on it. Uh, UA, if you're watching, I'm a big fan. I, I I'm I'm all in on this. I'm going to migrate. I already know I will. It's just a matter of time. All right, so I've got all of the vocals uh, ready to start tuning, and I will just hit the ground running. I'm going to start tuning all of these now, and um, we'll then move on to. Prepping for mixing and mastering. 
Something else that makes life a bit easier is if you find your spot to zoom in just so. So here we are, we've kind of got it. Let's go ahead. Something I like to do here is just kind of generally correct the pitch. Feet on the dash, feel the heat from the black top head. Pretty clean. Feet on the dash, feel the heat from the black top head for the coast for one last shot. So now when you're melodining, I do kind of want to express this. The pitch is represented via a line that you can see. So when it deviates really far down, like you'll see my mouse if you follow it here, that's the pitch that it's tracking. So if this were auto-tune, it would try to force every one of these to be a straight even line and just correct it so that it's you know, perfectly flat. With melodyne, that's not really the case. So that's how you get those really musical sounding vocals is it allows for the pitch deviation uh, and you are the corrector. So you decide how much correction you wanna apply if there's something totally off. And then, you know, of course I could take this note if I didn't like it and just move it, move it way up. And of course it sounds really ridiculous, um, right? Let's see where it is. Black top headed for the coast for yeah, it sounds terrible. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna leave it where it's at and Let's restore original pitch There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna get back to this and um, We'll check back with you in a little bit. All right, so I've really been burning the midnight oil on this one I just want it. I just want to wrap it up um, I had a heck of a time trying to really blend these two vocal tracks together. They did a great job singing. Uh, it was actually my mistake uh, in setting up the microphone uh, on Troy. So I had to play around with some EQing and uh, start to get a little bit into mixing before I jumped to mixing uh, to show you guys how I mix and how I set up my processing and my buses. Um, so before we do that, I kind of want to show you the state of affairs before we jump into mixing. So um, there's really nothing on any of the master buses. I've only got two master buses. I've got a main, I've got a drum bus, then I've got my drums here in blue. I've got my bass, I've got my acoustic guitars, all my electric guitars. Then I've got the two lead vocals. I added a little vocal delay. Now I'm going to double back around and change that out. Uh, then I got my harmonies right here. So, the state of affairs with processing, what we got on the vocals here, we've got tape plugins, full saturation. I think it sounds really cool. Um, then we've got Melodyne on all instances of all of the tracks. Uh, I actually ended up throwing on some auto tune uh, just to kind of help ease some of the vibrato and help in those harmonies. Um, outside of that, it's not really doing much. Then I've got a Neve 1081 uh, EQ on there that's kind of cutting out some of that low end, kind of adding some mid-range presence boost um, on both lead vocals. And then I've got 1176 Rev A. And then finally, I've got the Sonics Suppressor DSer, and I really needed that in this instance um, but I'm working with only the solo, so I'm kind of getting really, a lot of these plugins are actually pretty heavy duty, uh, as far as processing goes. So I'm thinking I'm going to actually want to start printing these tracks and, uh, you know, just freeing up some of that, uh, DSP so I can start building my buses and my mix buses. Um, and so I'll kind of take you guys through that in just a second. But I did want to update you on the state of affairs. I've finished the tuning. Uh, I've really refined all that and it's sounding great. So if you guys want to 
listen to this. This is kind of where, where the opening comes in. Now I know I'm going to have to do a lot of automation uh, when it comes to the pre-courses and the courses because the vocals kind of want them to sit right uh, as this is more of a duet. And uh, I think as it currently sits in the mix, the lead vocal of Troy is kind of much, much louder in those sections. So um, let's just give this a listen real quick. Nothing says summer like key lime pie and lemonade. Cruising top down and in the wind, doing that thing when you're making waves. Feet on the dash, feel the heat from the black top. Headed for the coast for one last shot of a little taste, a little getaway before the season change. Yeah, the winter turns to spring, but before summer turns to fall. And you're sitting on the couch and wishing somehow you could go back to it all. But so got the good times, sun shining for till I start to fade. Skinny dipping in the moonlight, just like beach bum renegades. Yeah, cool. Um, so let's talk about mixing real quick. Uh, looking at this, I know that I kind of have a few things in mind that I want to do to this. I'm going to want to try to create some sort of an instrument bus um, and bust these acoustics together. Uh, I might even bust them with the electric guitars. Now, I don't know if I'll bust them with the effects of the electric guitars, uh, but I'm definitely going to bust them together. Might even bust the bass together. I might keep it on its own. Not really sure yet. I've already got my drum bus, and I'm definitely going to have some sort of a vocal bus, all summing to the master bus. Um, and of course, I'll be writing the vocals in the, you know, in the different sections there. Um, so as far as vocal delays, I mentioned earlier that I created like this little kind of slap backy room kind of thing in the verse. And I think it really kind of adds this subtle effect right when the music drops out at the beginning. Let's take a listen. Nothing says summer like key lime pie and lemonade. Cruising top down and in the wind, doing that thing when you're making waves. Feet on the dash, feel the heat from the black top. Heading for the coast for one last shot of a little taste, a little getaway. So you can see it's pretty subtle, but it adds that little bit of depth. Now, all I'm using for that right now is the precision delay. Um, I actually love this delay. I think it's fantastic. Uh, all the different things that you can really do with it. And it's incredibly low DSP overhead. However, I think what I'm going to do is use something that's heavier. Now, I know right now, um, let's go to the info panel. You can see my DSP load right now is pretty much maxed out. There's nowhere for me to go. So I'm going to have to start printing things. Now, how am I going to approach that, right? So I think one of the things that I'm going to do for sure is on this harmony vocal, I already know like right now in the chorus section, if we listen to this, it comes in all the way panned hard left. Let's look at the good times, sunshine, for till I stop. Let's listen to that. Boom, bad, just like. So what I actually want to do to this is I'm going to put it back into the center and I want to kind of create some sort of stereo doubling effect and I'm going to use the Studio D chorus for that. So in order for me to get this effect, what I will now do is just pause some of these other ones to free up that DSP allocation and then add the effects that I want, print that one, get it out of the way, that's going to be done. Um, as far as these woes, I might do something similar to that. I might even bus all of this together and apply that processing all in one fell swoop. Um, and then just have, I'll have one fader as a wave file, uh, like a wet track might do that. And the cool thing is I can just keep all of these saved, but not in my mix. I'll just, you know, mute them out. So like, for example, right here, I just hide them. <laughs> 
and then problem solved, right? So I have the originals. If I want to make any changes, I can go back to them, make those changes, and that's that. Um, but for right now, for right now, I'm going to take five and grab a, grab a coffee, grab, grab some water, and uh, I'll be right back at it. All right, so late last night, I was able to get this, uh, get the vocal tracks uh, comped, melodined, and ready for mixing, and I kind of got a head start on it, but I figured that it was a good jumping off point. So I appreciate you guys watching part two, and go check out part three to see the mixing and the mastering stage and how I deal with DSP in a session that's as big as this with uh, just the Apollo Solo here. Uh, so far, it's been a blast making this track with the Apollo Solo. Luna's been fantastic. I think it's sounding great, and I can't wait to hear the finished product. So for all that have been watching, thank you so much. Um, if you like the sounds of the acoustic guitars, if you like the sounds of the electric guitars, be sure to check out the Console Classic Sessions Pack. Those were the exact sounds that I was using uh, to make all of this. So it's definitely pretty cool. I'm, I'm vibing. I like it. Check out part three. Thanks, guys. See you.